Okay, uh, this segment is called USB's Bookshelf. Basically, uh, I'll grab something off the bookshelf that catches my eye and bring you a review on it. Let you know if it's worth picking up. Um, tonight, we've got the Big Trouble in Little China graphic novel. This is The Hell of the Midnight Road and the Ghost of Storms. i got to tell you, USB, I'm particularly excited about this particular uh, offering because if any of the books that I would be walking by and happen to catch my eye on your bookshelf, that would probably be the first one. Because I love the movie. Love the movie. One of my all-time favorites. We love the movie back in here uh, in the basement. It's up here on the, on the, uh, the select DVD shelf. Um, the movie's fantastic. It's a modern classic. It's a cult favorite. Not so much when it first came out in 1986. Back in 86, uh, if you don't know Big Trouble in Little China, the movie, stop watching if this. You don't know, yeah, right. If you don't know Big Trouble in Little China, quite frankly, well, why are you watching this? Yeah, I mean, this this show, if, if, if you're interested in this show, then you have to know what this is. Um, but stop watching this and go watch the movie and then come back. He's not kidding. He's serious. Do it right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, really. I, you're, you know, I, because you know what? I'm just helping myself. Because then you're going to be like, that USB guy knows what's up. He knows quality. So I'm going to keep checking him out regularly. Uh, it's the uh, Squid uh, Pro Commie that he was talking about. Um, <laughs> so, Did you say something about a squid? Squid. Yeah. Uh, anyways, so... But this review is about this graphic novel, The Hell of the Midnight Road and The Ghosts of Storms. So is it any good? Well, here's the thing. It's not bad. Uh, I'm, you know, and I'm not like some people that's going to make you wait uh, for the for the review score. You don't, I mean, I'm, I'll lay it out. This is about a six and a half out of ten right oh, here. That's so disappointing. I had well, here, here, here's the thing. It's again, it's it's not a bad book. Um, John Carpenter actually worked on this. I, I think he helped with the story. I don't believe he helped much with the dialogue and the writing <laughs> that was handled uh, by a gentleman named. Um, oh, maybe they apparently they buried the name. Is uh, no, no, this, <laughs> this guy. And, and I know his last name. I just I want to make. Eric Powell, uh, and and if you are into comics, um, he did a comic book called The Goon, and that was uh, it, you know it was a really um, you know really well read uh, you know well written book. Um, the Goon is 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 a uh, is a fine fine comic book. Right, so then when it when it was important and he had something you know cherished and amazing in his hands, he decided to drop the ball. Well, here's the thing. I had a whole list of pros and cons. I'll just I'll, let's just throw them <laughs> throw them all out here because uh, I'm a positive guy. Um, and I won't go any more into the mythos of the Big Trouble in Little China movie. Again, go check it out. But when it first came out, uh, it was fantastic for those of us that got it. I, the humor and the dialogue of uh, at the time, I think, was lost on a lot of people. You know, nowadays everyone just takes for granted when a movie's quirky and odd and it ca crosses a lot of genres. Right. Nowadays, it's that's a given I and mean, that's no big deal. Thirty years ago, that wasn't the case, and this this movie. Big Trouble in Little China, starring Kurt Russell and a young Kim Cattrall. Indeed, um, uh, and you know it was just it was it was just a little bit out of it, a lot of people's grasp. You know, it was it was funny, but it was martial arts and it was a self-referential. It was it was an excellent movie. Now it's a cult classic. Almost everyone's seen it. If you haven't, once again, but Stop um, right now go watch it. Right, but we accepted the fact many years ago that we weren't going to get a sequel. It just wasn't going to happen. Kurt Russell had gotten older. Uh, it wasn't. It did, hadn't hit cult status enough yet to really justify. So a sequel wasn't really in the cards. In many ways, I, some, some might argue that that's probably a good thing. Yeah, some could uh, because it, uh, you know, I will go. I will go with the escape from L.A. argument. <laughs> right. You, it, it, you know, be, best to just have left it escape from New York. Um, Snake Plissken on a snurf, surfboard, we don't need that. <laughs> we never need that. that. Uh, you know, high five with the Fonda. <laughs> so, when, you know, they announced these comic books and, and the property got picked up, while not a direct sequel, uh, is much in the vein of Firefly. You know, Firefly, uh, as we mentioned earlier, you know, they, it got the movie Serenity sucked. <laughs> see, I'm one of the few people that were fortunate enough to actually see the movie. 
before I had heard of the show, so I was able to enjoy them both. And I, and, and even the the hardcore brown coats are, are love the movie and the movie. I'm sorry, the movie's terrible. I know we might lose people, and I hope not. I, you know, it's just my opinion. But that's a whole other that's a whole other review. <laughs> right, you know, we got we got the Firefly that. Bible up there. You know, we I can dig out, but we'll get into that some other time. The review for this graphic novel. Enough beating around the bush. When it was announced and they came out, you know, since we never were going to get a was going to get a real sequel, this was like a blessing in disguise. It's like, oh, great, more adventures. John Carpenter's attached to it. Um, here is the biggest positive of this book: is that the potential that it represents. If they fix a few things. The potential exists for this to be a great series and a great handling of the property. Uh, so not so much a gem on its own, but as a jumping off point for the potential of something good. As a jumping off point for the potential for something great. If yeah. if if they change a few things. Now, let's hit the positives. Lay them on me. <clears throat> I'm going to lay them on you. All right. Here's the positives. John Carpenter is attached. So the flavor of Big Trouble in Little China exists in this book. Uh, you can definitely tell that his hand is in there somewhere. Um, so that's a positive. That's definitely a good thing. It has an amazing cover gallery in the back. And we'll throw a couple of scans up. But, I mean, look at that artwork. That That is just some... Tasty. That is some beautiful artwork right there. I mean, you can... Yeah. I mean, check that out. Um, artwork is... Her is almost glistening in that. He is. And uh, the cover artwork is awesome. So the flavor, the cover artwork, it's 15 bucks. You know, nowadays we're getting gouged for like 30 bucks for a graphic novel. Um, so at $15, this is really a steal, and you might even be able to get it cheaper. I mean, that's that's cover price, 15 bucks. You could probably get it a few bucks knocked off at your friendly local comic shop. Um, so the price isn't awful. The flavor exists of Big Trouble in Little China. Kurt Russell's attached. Cover gallery is awesome. And, and again, the biggest pro is the potential. Now, instead of saying cons, I'm going to say these are some things they could work on. Um, or I could just flat out just say this, this is the stuff that was, was balls on toast. <laughs> One of the two. You know, I try to be nice. I, I mean, we're trying to get viewers in. We're trying to bring people into the show and, and onto the channel because, you know, I can't go back out there to work. I can't go back out there into the world looking like this and get a job. I need YouTube money. <laughs> but I digress. Balls on Toast has been called, ladies and gentlemen. Balls on Toast has been called, and, and let me just get right into it, and I'm not even I'm not even going to jerk around anymore. No niceties. Here's the deal. This artwork doesn't work for me. Okay, it's by a guy named Brian Chirillo. Uh, he worked on the Avengers, and, and I'm, I'm happy for him on doing that. It doesn't fit this story. It is too cartoony, okay? Um, it, it's not that he's a bad artist. It's his style. His style doesn't fit. It's just, it's way too... Well, here, you take a look. Does that not look just a little bit too cartoony? It is cartoony. It's cartoony and clean. Uh, it, it's clean. There's not very much grit or grime. I mean. No, and, and, and I mean, I, I know the argument is going to be, well, Big Trouble in Little China is a very uh, cartoony premise and, and movie, but that doesn't mean that cartoonish artwork fits right. the comic yeah. book. More often to make it, whereas if a movie is cartoony, the, the cartoon version should be cinematic. Right. And and honestly, um, I mean, there's some some of the artwork is really questionable. I mean, I mean, here's a picture, if we can zoom in. If not, you might not be able to see that, but you will. It looks like Egg Chin's face is melting. Melting egg chin. That's just does it not? I mean, I mean, uh, I mean, I know you could say, oh, well, in the movie it looks like no. Th no. This is so. Uh, I understand the difficulty of making great artwork. Okay, especially for a comic book, the artwork style doesn't fit. Okay, you've got realistic covers, and I know the argument is is that covers never represent what's in. That's true, but this is simply too cartoony. So they need to go with a different artist or definitely a different style. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is the dialogue feels forced. It feels like they watch the movies a lot, and instead of using the movies as a foundation for dialogue, they just ripped 
stuff right out of the movie. It's sort of like taking a famous newscaster and putting a different color wig on him and trying to pass it off as your own character. Who the hell would do that? Yeah, that would be a cheap, cheap, uh, cheap underhanded comic comedic tactic. Yeah, sure. I got that much respect. I'm saying. I'm saying. But uh, it's just, uh, yeah, uh, again, the dialogue, it feels forced. It feels like they're just like, well, well, let's try to use as much dialogue from the movies and squeeze it in here as we can. Um, so that really doesn't work very well. The story isn't bad. Um, you know, there's not enough wang in this book. Okay, we, I'm just going to leave that one alone. Yeah, don't leave it alone. You know why? <laughs> because that joke shows up a couple of times in this book. Uh, of course it does. Of course it does. A couple of times. So, it's lazy. Okay? it's it, You might be able to get away with it once and get a chuckle. When you go to that well a few times, it's lazy and it's sad. And it shows that you're trying really too hard. Or not hard enough. But That's what she said. Exactly. So... So that's not great. And really, the final problem with this book is, this is a fun book. It's good times. Everyone has a lot of laughs and stuff in Big Trouble in Little China and everything. Here's what doesn't exist in Big Trouble in Little China in the movie, and most certainly should not exist in this book. Melodrama. You, It doesn't have a place in this universe. And if it does... It most certainly needs to have a precedent set, okay? If you are going to introduce melodrama into a book like this, you need to do it early on. You need to at least have a level of subtlety to let people know that this isn't all just fun and games. That, in fact, you know, there's going to be some kind of, there's some little bit of heavy-handedness in this. I am not going to give away spoilers, as I don't think that's cool. If I ever do, I'll let you know. And I'm not going to give away a spoiler now, but I will say this. When you read this, if you choose to read this, the melodrama happens quickly, singularly, only once, and it lands like a big iron turd right near the end of this book. Now, I don't know if they were trying to flesh the character of Jack Burton out, or I'm not sure exactly what the writer was trying to do, but whatever he was trying to do failed miserably. <laughs> Okay, it was bad because it pulls you from the story, it pulls you from the experience, and and leaves you scratching your head, going, "What the hell?" That's, That's not what I look for in my graphic novels. Again, if a precedent has been set, if you sit down to read, uh, you know, The Dark Knight Rises to go old school, you know, there's going to be some heavy stuff in there. There's going to be some dark stuff. I mean, they established that early on. This. It didn't fit. It was bad. It was just a bad choice to put it in. Um, and again, it just it pulls you out of the experience, which is most certainly something that you don't want when you're reading a comic book. So that really is kind of the final nail in the coffin of, of this book. Again, the potential exists for this to be something special. And I, I don't know, it's uh, from Boom Studios. Uh, you know, I'm willing to forgive some things because it is their first outing with this property and and you know writers artists sometimes it takes several books or years for things to jive episodes or episodes <laughs> uh, so while I would give it a 6.5 out of 10 whatevers um, I am going to recommend this I think you should read it I think you should pick it up especially if you're a big trouble in little China fan that being said, if you aren't a Big Trouble in Little China fan, don't pick this up. <laughs> don't don't seek this out. If you've never seen the movie, go see the movie and then pick this up. If you like the movie, if you hated the movie, there's something wrong with you. And I can't, you know, this. There's not enough distance and time with this for me to do anything for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, go 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 watch Goofy Pie or whatever that idiot is that screams at the. Or Twilight, yeah, yeah. Go find something else to watch. I mean, if you have a problem with Big Trouble in Little China, hit the bricks, jabroni. <laughs> uh, so, if you are a fan, pick the book up. It's not super expensive. It shouldn't bust your wallet. If, I mean, if you have to go a few weeks without crackers and cheese, you know, you know, maybe hold off. But so that's that's Big Trouble in Little worth China. Worth the read, but not worth missing out on weeks of crackers and cheese. You heard it here first. Yeah, or ramen, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, but if you're a fan, you get a chance, pick it up, check it out. Uh, 
So that's it, USB's bookshelf, 6.5 out of 10. You know, if you pick it up and you hate it, you've been warned. If you pick it up and you loved it, well, even better. Hey you, hit like, subscribe, and share, or the rabbit gets it.